what, what are you getting out of the classes? What benefit are you getting out of the classes? And the number one answer, which is the right answer to get, is I need people to change the way they look at things. That's the number one thing, is to change the way you look at things. Because the minute you start changing the way you look at things, the things that you look at are going to change. That's the number one thing. Because it, it, you can't have the same mind with the same problem and expect a different result. That's called insanity. Albert Einstein says, if a person does the same thing today and he expects a different result tomorrow, it's, compl it's complete insanity. That's the main thing. That's the main message that we're getting out of these classes, is, is to really change the way you look at things. Um, we, we'd not have a victim mentality, but have a, a knowing that Hashem is with us. So l l first we want to, I want to, there's a big, big mis misconception of Hashem out there to people. Many people think that Hashem is, 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 very, is very harsh, or Hashem is punishing them all the time. Or even people say, they tell me, I think Hashem is picking on me. Like, Hashem's got to stop the world just to go pick on a little guy uh, to do his. But this is a major, major thing that people have, this image that Hashem is picking on them individually. So that's the first thing you gotta, you gotta really come and, and understand. It's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. If you understand that Hashem reveals to us His 30 measures of attributes, His 30 milos of rachamim, not one of them have any kind of judgment on them. It's what? Merciful, right? It says, Hashem, Hashem, El Rachum Bechanun. He's patient. He's merciful. He wants the best for the person, but unfortunately, if the person's going in the wrong direction, he's got to give him a smack. Just like you saw if one of your kids was going in the wrong direction, you got to give him a smack. It's called tough love. Tough love. Is tough love, does it work for everybody? Some people it does, some people it doesn't. But people, the first thing you have to understand, because if you don't get this part right, you can get it all wrong. If you, I, I meet tons of people that say, I think Hashem is picking on me. Why is He doing this to my life? And then six months later, they realize it was the greatest thing that ever happened to them, their, their struggle. So yeah, that's the number one thing. Change the way you perceive Hashem. You have to understand Hashem is your Father and He wants the best things for you. Stop thinking that He's punishing you. Stop thinking that He wants the, the worst for you. Yes, He gives you obstacles, but He's with you in the obstacle. He's next to you holding your hand to making sure, by the way, Make sure you don't fall. He's with you in the obstacle. That's the number one thing you got to get right. If you don't have that right, that's the Muna. If you don't have that right, you can close, you can close the book and call it, all, call it a day. Because that, that, that mentality that a lot of people have is only a mentality of judgment. Because what happens when you think that way? You're going to put your head down and you're going to start thinking of the, well, all the worst things that are going to happen to you and you're going to live with a lot of fear. And that kind of mentality is, is going to get you nowhere. I've never heard of one guy saying, Hey, how'd you get out of this problem? I don't know. I just woke up and I felt better. It just doesn't happen. When you make, when you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at will change. Number one thing. You have to understand Hashem loves you. Yes, even if a person's gone farther away, even if a person sins, it doesn't make a difference. Rav Nachman says, if you can destroy, you can rebuild. Who didn't? I don't know one person that I know in this town that wasn't with shiksas and wasn't in that world that we're all, we were all there. We were all there, but we did tshuva. And that's it. You do tshuva and you forget. It's all about the future. But we don't want to think about the past. Because the past is going to give us guilt, remorse. And that's what we're going to talk about today, is how to deal with your emotions. Because Rav Nachman's main message in Lesson 10, is not about, you know, you're going to teach a guy, Gemara, and the guy's thinking about, you know, he's thinking about losing money in, in the stock market. Or he's going to be thinking about uh, the girl that just dumped him. His head's not there. His head's not there. You're teaching the guy Gemara and his head's in, in La La Land. First get the guy focused, get the guy engaged, and then you can teach him whatever you want. But if you don't get the guy mentally straight, if the guy doesn't know how to deal with his emotions, and he doesn't know how to deal with his thoughts, then, then unfortunately what's going to happen, he's not going to catch any of it. He's not going to catch any of it. So that's my, my, my main goal in these classes, is really to get mental strength and emotional mastery. Because if you get that right, there's no goal you can't hit. Anything you put your mind on, you're going to hit. There's a reason why 8% of people who make resolutions on New Year's, keep them. Only 8%. What's going on with the other 92%? 92%? Isn't that crazy? You tell me 50%, 60%. But you mean to tell me 92% of people fail in the resolutions? That's a huge number. What's going on? And they say 50% of them make it. That means only 50% say they want to change. The others don't even, after life gets a little hard, they get a little struggle, I can't do it. I can't do it. Because your mind's not strong. 
you don't have a strong mind because in order to hit an obstacle, in order to hit a goal, you need a strong mind. You can change your hair, you can change your city. People tell me, you know, maybe I should move to Florida. Maybe my mazal is going to be better in Florida. I said, absolutely not. Don't go anywhere. Stay where you are. Just change your mind. Change your mind frame. Because moving somewhere is not going to change your mind. That's the number, number one thing that I, I tell people. Change your mind frame, change your perception. When you change your perception, you change your mind frame, you change your reality. That's really, the key. That's really the key. And I see it, unfortunately, I see the end result in rehab. Drug rehab, I see the end result. One guy, he, he, he's got a certain perception of God. He hates God, what, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Next thing you know, how is he getting happy? Through drinking, through drugs. Next thing you know, he's in rehab. His body's collapsed. And there, there's his whole life. So we can't make mistakes here. You know, how they train astronauts. How they train astronauts. They make sure that the astronaut, before he goes into space, they train him not to hit the panic button all the time. Because if you hit the panic button in, 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 in space, you're going to die. But what happens nowadays, we're hitting the panic button every time we get an email. I say, just, just take a guy with his mother-in-law, just take his wife and his mother-in-law for one hour in a room. You see how many times the guy's going to hit the panic button. <laughs> so you can't, we're, we're hitting the panic button too, too much. Every time you hit the panic button, you have to understand it distresses your brain and it makes you unable to make the proper decisions. So being able to master your emotions and being able to master your thoughts is very key because that's going to prevent you from hitting the panic button and then you're going to be able to control your mind instead of having your emotions control you. Okay? So today, we have this beautiful article by uh, this, this rabbi, Rabbi uh, Ariel Ben says, oh, beautiful, beautiful article to say. He says here, today he says, it's the mind, not the body, that needs to slow down. What do we have today? We have the absolute opposite. The body's not moving, and the guy's thinking about everything that's going, that's going to happen in his life that didn't exist. He's thinking about 90% of the problems that, that are going to happen, and meanwhile, it's just a bunch of fant fantasy. And the body's not moving. That's why people say, what did you do all day? Why am I so tired? Why are you so tired all day long? What did you do? You, I didn't even leave the house. Yeah, but your mind ran, your, right, your man ran a marathon the whole day. And that's the thing. We need the body to move, not the mind to move. The mind needs to be still. If the mind is able to have a little stillness, then you're going to be able to hear your soul speaking to you, telling you exactly what you need to do in life, what your mission is in life. But if the body, if the mind is constantly on, 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 then you, you can't hear that inner voice, which is your soul, telling you, what do I need to do every single day? So if you don't change your rituals every single day, if a person doesn't have different rituals and he doesn't have, uh, actually, he's not exercising his mind, then it's going to be unfortunately, to, unfortunately very hard to make the proper decisions in life. And you see nowadays, unfortunately, people make the most important decisions in their life nowadays in the worst states of their life. Think about what decisions people are making. They're making it when they're at their worst. That's when you're making the biggest decision of your life, when, when you're, you're, your mind is in the toilet. Why would you do that? Where do you think it's coming from, that decision? It's coming from the other side. That's where Rav Nachman's main emphasis was to break, to break the pattern of thinking. Always, you have to fight for simcha. He even got to the extent, Rav Nachman, he even got to the extent that you have to do something silly. Even if you have to do something stupid just to break your state, because unfortunately, if a person doesn't break his state, guess what? His pattern is going to go into a negative pattern and end up in a depression. Once you're in depression, very hard to get out of it. Very hard to get out of it. So, you have to understand something. We have to be able to break patterns. We have to become aware of what we're thinking about. We have to become, master our emotions. And I'm going to give you the, the ten emo those popular emotions. And I'm going to tell you exactly how to deal with it. There, some of this stuff is from Tony Robbins. He gave a great class on this. And I'm going to, I'm going to, give, it, I'm going to give it a little kadusha uh, And bring, it, uh, bring R Rav Nachman into it. Because at the end of the day, it's all from that. So li listen to this article, which is saying it's beautiful. He's saying now, we don't suffer from a lack of information, we suffer from a lack of direction. It's not a lack of information, it's a lack of direction. We gave the example today. The CIA doesn't know who, who, which criminal, they get 30 leads on, on which guy is a, is a terrorist. They, get a, they have a lot of information, but they don't know which guy is the guy. Well, they don't know who to go after. So we have plenty of information, we have no direction. That's the problem nowadays. Why? Because Listen to this, because we suffer from a lack of direction and direction does not originate in the mind. Direction comes from the heart. 
the heart is not activated. If the person's heart is not activated, he's not hearing that inner voice, he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to do in life. So he says, feeling from the heart is a lost art to most of us. This is why the majority of individuals today are somewhat lost. They are lost in this world because first, they are first lost to themselves. And he says something very beautiful. How can one find one's way in this world if you cannot even find one's way in one's own heart? If you can't even find your heart inside of you, how could you find what to do in life? How can you be, be at peace with the world if you can't be at peace with yourself? So what, what, how do you get to this level? You understand? This is, it, it seems so obvious, but it's true. How could you be at peace with somebody else? How can a person have shalom bite with, some, with his wife if he's not even at peace with himself? It's, it's impossible. So he says, how can one be at peace with oneself if one doesn't even know oneself? How many people know each other, know, know who you really are? Until you dig deep, you spend some time alone, and you contemplate. That's the only way. And this is, how can one know oneself when one is thinking too fast, and he doesn't even slow down to hear what his voice is telling him? This is life, 101. So if, you, if, this, is the, if this is the behavior, the constant stimulation, on the phone, etc., etc., then you never get to hear your voice, and you never get to hear what your soul is telling you, you never, you're, na- you're never able to fix yourself. If you're never able to fix yourself, then how, how do you know what you're doing is right? How do you know where to start? That's why it's so important to really, Rabbi Nachman's main emphasis was a co- constantly being in bittle, making yourself into nothing. Because if you make yourself into nothing, and you, you lower your ego, then you'll get everything. But unfortunately, sometimes our ego, what we perceive in the world, is stopping all the growth. And that's the problem nowadays. That's why I, I keep on telling people, if you don't have 10 minutes to do his bodhidut, you need two hours. If you don't have 10 minutes to talk to God, you need two hours to talk to God. That's the, pro- that's the biggest problem. And how are you hearing the inner voice inside of you that's telling you what you need to fix? Everything's communication. So, you got to... It's not the body. The mind has to stop moving. The body should be moving, and the mind should be still. Opposite. Opposite of what we're dealing with today. Okay? So, number one investment we have to make ourselves is clearly, clearly, clearly mental stillness and hearing that inner voice inside of us. Because that's how you're going to be able to hit your goals. That's the only way a person's going to be able to go through life and hit his goals and do his purpose in life. Okay? So, we're going to talk about so Rav Nachman says in Lesson 10 that the majority of the people, why people are not close to, close to God nowadays is because they don't have a settled mind. Number one reason. Number one reason. Not because they're Chabad, not, not because they're Breslov, not because they're Ashkenazi, not because they're A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It's because you don't have a settled mind. Why? Because unfortunately, depression makes you not, you're not in charge of your mind. A person's depressed. What's the first sign of a person being depressed nowadays? What is it a real sign of a person? He's overwhelmed in life. Depression, depressed people are overwhelmed. They don't know where to start. That's the real They don't know where to start. Where do I start? How do I start? So they, they, they bring so many problems upon themselves and really depression is really a sign that a person doesn't know where to start. Because if he started running, he would get out of it. So depression is really, it's a sign that you're overwhelmed in life and you don't know where to start. Because as, as, so what is the key to getting out of depression? Start with one thing. You don't have to tackle the whole football field in one day. Just do one thing right now. Do the next thing right now. That's the first step for a person to get out of depression. Move. We know when the Jews were, in, when, were crossing the Red Sea, what did they tell them? Stop praying. Move. You got to move. Sometimes a person just has to move. Stop praying. Move. Take some action. Change something. Change your middle. Change something. The Nachman says here, Lesson 54. Okay? But the problem is nowadays, a lot of everybody wants to be inspired all the time. But it's not inspiration, it's 2%. 2% inspiration should be 98% perspiration. That means, yeah, per- inspiration should get you going, but the 98% should be discipline, strong habits, commitment. That's how a person is able to, to, to be able to accomplish his goals. It's not the inspiration. Yeah, I got inspired, big deal. 2% of inspiration. That's why people get inspired all the time. It, even studies are even showing that the majority of people, what do they do? They buy exercise machines. They never even use them. They go January 1st, they buy the exercise machine in their house, and they never even use it. Yeah, they get inspired to do it, but when it comes to running, no, I can't do it. Can't do it. So, 
You understand? So, so I'm trying to tell you, inspiration is not, is not enough. It's commitment, discipline. Every day, every single day is a brand new day. Every single day is a brand new day. So look what, look what Rav Nachman says in Lesson 54. Beautiful. Why it's so important, why it's so important what I'm trying to tell you to silence your mind and listen to what your soul is saying. Why this is so important? Because he says it very clearly. He says, each day has its thought, word and deed, that the Holy One, blessed be He, He contracts Himself. Hashem makes Himself, contracts Himself to each individual person. You wouldn't believe it, but Hashem can actually send you signs to each person. He makes Himself the greatness of God. He contracts Himself to every single person. Okay? And what does He do? He arranges for Him thought, word, deed, according to the particular day, and the particular person, and the particular place, and he gives them all the hints for him through thought, word, and deed to bring him closer to him. Guess what? What do you need to do this? You need to be able to listen. You need to be able to see the sign. But guess what? If you're stuck on yesterday, you can't see the sign for today. If you're stuck on tomorrow, you can't see the sign for today. You can't see the sign for today. So every single day, that's why it's so dangerous. Because you don't believe in a new creation. The worst thing in life for a person to be stuck on, in, on the past because he doesn't believe in the renewal of his creation. So that's what, what, what is that considered? The end of the world for you. It's the end of the world. That means your day ended. Lesson 49 talks about when a person has negative thoughts, what does he do? He clogs his heart. What is his heart? His creation. So when your heart is clogged, that's the end of your creation. What's, your, what, what's today's day? What's today's day? I'm, I'm, I'm stuck on 2015, January 20th. My problem. I couldn't get out of that problem. That's your creation. It's over. That's where your day, that's where your life stopped. That's why it's so dangerous because you don't believe in a new creation. You don't believe in, in Hashem. Which is what? A lack of Amuna. The Amuna is to believe that every single day is a brand new day. It's a brand new business. You have to walk into it every day. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new business. It's a brand, I have a brand new wife. Everything's, when you look at everything brand new, then that's a taste of the world to come. When you look at everything as yesterday, then you can never renew, renew yourself. That's what he says here. Each day is entirely a new creation. As it is written in his goodness, he, he reacts daily acts of creation. Yeah, he explained that the spiritual worlds are in constant flux. Much of the stars and constellation are constantly changing in heaven. So each day is very, very different from the previous one. Every day is a brand new day. You have to wake up and say, today is a brand new day. Yesterday was yesterday, today is a brand new day. Today was the day where you could have had your opportunity, but you got stuck on yesterday, you never got the opportunity to, to make the new day. First thing I say in my meditation, today is a brand new day. I look at the world like a brand new day, so I get that renewal. That's where my energy comes from. What's dragging my energy? What's killing my energy? Yesterday. And what's killing my energy? Worrying about the future. That's what's destroying my energy. It's not the present moment that says people are not stressed about the moment. They're stressed about what, they're not stressed about the situation. They're stressed about what the situation means to them. What their interpretation of, the, of that situation tomorrow. So if you look at every single day as brand new, then you can believe your wife can change. You can believe you can change. You, you can believe I can do a goal. But if you don't believe this, then you're stuck on, you're the 8%. What's the difference between the 92% and the 8%? The 8% believes, I can, just because I didn't do it last year, who says I can't do it this year? The 92% says, I didn't do it last year, I'm not doing it this year again. Just like I failed last year, I'm going to fail this year again. That's the difference. Okay, you want to be the 8% or you want to be the 92%? Up to you. There's a lot of company downstairs. There's a lot of company, 92%. A lot of people, a lot of company. But the 8%, different, different character. That means that to, to be part of the 8%, you gotta be on top of your game. You gotta listen to your voice, you gotta listen to your soul, and you gotta have mental strength. You can't be one of those guys that has a bad day and he, and he, and he runs to the bar. Can't be those guys, because we know the night comes before the day. And that's really the key. That's how I was able to go through the toughest points of my life. When I renewed the day, when I made the day longer, even the hour, even if you have a, a, a couple tough hours, two o'clock, your day is going like, it's a terrible day. Three o'clock, 
you know what? Three o'clock doesn't mean it's two o'clock. Three o'clock, it's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. That's the mind frame you gotta have. I heard a very inspiring, a very inspiring video that this guy, Josh, uh, I can't remember, David Ogden, I believe. He's a Navy SEAL. He's a Navy SEAL. And the way he trains is, he says, the minute his body is completely shut down, he says, that's when 40% of your mind is activated. He says, I still have 60% left to go. Imagine a person completely knocked down. Here, people get knocked one, one mile run, they're already on the floor. <laughs> this guy's running 90 miles, 70 miles, and he says, I only got 40, I, I only, I'm only at 40%. I have 60% more. What's the difference between that guy and another guy? person has to say, whatever he is in his, in his life. I'm only 40%. I got 60% more. I tried that today. Because now what do you do? What do you do when you say that now? You're basically reprogramming your subconscious to say, you got 60% more in you. So anything that when you feel exhausted, you got to say, I'm only 40%. I got 60% more. That should, that should be the new programming in your subconscious. You see, you can program your brain to help you. If you say the right things to your brain, but if you say the wrong things to your brain, like I'm a loser, I have no energy, I'm tired, I'm never going to do this, I'm exhausted, I'm going to run out of money, ba 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 ba. That's what that's where you are today because of your of your subconscious, the constant constant garbage, negative self talk, and that's where a person is today. He said so many negative things to himself that he can't get out of it. Who's saying? Why would you say something to yourself that you don't want? That you don't want? Why would you say something to yourself that doesn't make you feel good? Because you're not in control of your mind. That's the, otherwise, you'd be completely insane. Just tell yourself, I have no self-confidence. I'm going to lose. Why would you tell somebody? Well, imagine a football team saying, you know, today we're going to lose. They're going to think, that, to put the guy in the hospital. What do you mean you're going to lose? You get paid to win. You don't get paid to lose. So that's the key. That's the key why we need emotional mastery. We need to be able to be on top of what our, what our thinking is because we want to believe, to, 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 to switch our mind to say, Every day is a brand new day, every day is a brand new moment, and that's the renewal of absolutely everything. So let's talk about emotions and what emotions mean. It's a great article by Tony Robbins. First I want to give you guys the, how emotions affect your body. It's amazing how Hashem made that specific emotions affect specific parts of your body. I, I was so fascinated with, you know, the Chinese got all, got the gifts from Abraham. They got all the gifts on healing. All the healing went to the Chinese. So I'm fascinated when, when, when a person, you know, when, one time I went to, to a, um, one time I went to a uh, acupuncturist and he starts talking to me about my emotional state, how, how you stressed out, are you fearing anything? And I asked him, well, what are you, my psychologist? You're my acupuncturist, just stick the needles where you need to stick them. He says, I can't stick the needles where you want them to stick because I need to know what's wrong with you first. I need to know what emotion is affecting the organ. I said, what? I was fascinated. I said, how, did, how, how is this possible? You know, you go to a doctor, doctor, I'm depressed. Okay, here's Prozac. See, see the problem. Here's my shrink, go talk about your problems. Blah, 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 blah. Here's the Prozac, have a nice day. Right? Or whatever, whatever pill they're giving the person nowadays. <laughs> you speak to Chinese doctor, what do they tell you? What's the matter with your life? What are you stressed about? And that time I was going through a very stressful situation and I got very angry at times. And you know what happened? I, I had a small problem in my liver. And I didn't realize the anger and the liver are, are related. And, and so to show you now, if we, don't, if we don't, the problem is we all have negative emotions. Now, we're going to talk to you how to deal with them. But if they become suppressed, that's the dangerous part. The dangerous part is when they're suppressed. When they're not, when you, when you constantly, constantly think about them and it becomes suppressed, that's when they can actually affect your body. And God forbid, that can, that can bring you to, God forbid, negative states. So let's, let's, let's give you some examples of some, some suppressed organ situations. For example, if a person is very worried all the time and he's always overthinking, what does the Ramach say? It's about the spleen. The spleen gets affected. When a person, it's amazing how overthinking can affect your spleen. And what, it, what is the symptom of, 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 a, of a person having a bad spleen? His, his food digestion's out of whack, his, his stomach turns, he's tired, he loses his appetite, he, all, kinds of, all kinds of stomach problems due to what? Overthinking. It's amazing how you overthink, next thing you know, you're, you're nauseous. How, how is that one related to the other? It's an unreal how Hashem created that every single thought creates a certain impulse on a certain part of the body. To show you how the 365 mitzvahs and the 248 negative commandments, 630 commandments, it's all related. 
That means a person can feel a pain in a certain part of its body, dealing with a certain attribute that he's, that he's, he's got forbid he's sinning. So for example, lungs. I know a guy in synagogue, he can't breathe. The guy can't breathe. I said, you know, what's up with the breathing? He, he can't breathe. So we spoke a little bit about what was going on. What was happening? His emotion was sadness. Sadness affects the lungs. Sadness affects the lungs. So what does it do? Excessive grief. He had so much grief and so much sadness that every time the guy says a man, he, he can't breathe. What do you think? You just get a cold like that? No. That's long-term excessive sadness and grief. It affects your lungs. It affects the ability to, 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 to breathe. Is it really worth it? Is your health worth it? Are you, you worried worry about you can't breathe because you, you, a person's constantly depressed? So, sadness is an emotion of the lung. And what is it going to lead to? It's going to lead to all kinds of shortness of breath, fatigue, all kinds of things. So it's not that you're not fatigued because you're working hard. You're fatigued because you're thinking too much. You're thinking too much. You didn't even do anything. You didn't even get out of bed. And you could be completely exhausted. How is that possible? Where another guy can work 15 hours at work with a great mood and he comes home like he wants to, like he wants to kill the world. What's the difference between one guy and the other one? So we know the kidneys. I had a friend of mine, he had a kidney stone. I said, I looked it up. I said, you probably had fear. What was your fear that you had? He said, you know, I had just opened up a restaurant. I was worried I wasn't going to make money. What happened? He had a kidney stone. The fear brings the kidney stone. The fear affects what? The kidneys. And how do you know what, what, when the emotions are out of balance? You have what? You feel very insecure. You feel very isolated. You feel very fearful. You have no willpower. So it's all related. The whole body, mind, health, it's all related. It's all related. Liver, I see this all the time in rehab. Very good chance. The guy's angry. Guess what? He's going to drink. He's going to drink. Liver, alcohol, go together. And angry people, go together. How come so many angry people? It's funny how people drink, they get very angry. Because what happens? It knocks the liver out. Of the, it knocks the liver out. So what's the, when, it, when, it's, when, it's, when the emotion's out of balance, you get frustration, you get irritability, you get explosive anger, etc., etc., etc. So now you see the connection between the body and the emotion. So um, if, it's, if these emotions are not dealt with properly, if they are not dealt with right away, if they are suppressed, these are the results. These are the results. So a person could say, listen, I'm going to have to deal with pain regardless. So I might as well start working on my mind. Because it's not worth going to see a doctor every single week for excessive worry, for, for nonsense. Worries, what are you worried about? Have you ever made money when you're worried? When, have you ever made one dollar? I always people, did you ever make one dollar when you worried? No. So why are you doing it? Did you ever solve the problem when you worried? No. So why are you doing it? Because your body, you can't make the right decision if your body is constantly causing, causing this, this fight or flight. Okay? So Tony Robbins has this unbelievable, unbelievable um, concept about how do we deal with the emotions and what, each, which, what emotion means. Okay? So emotions are actually negative emotions. He's saying the minute you get them, it's actually a very good sign. Why is it a very good sign? Because what is it? It's a call to action. That means, technically, if you don't feel happy, if you feel grief, common sense, I gotta do something about it. When people don't do anything about it, when a person's depressed and he doesn't do anything about it, then it becomes a problem. A sign from Hashem, if Hashem's making you feel a certain way, it's because it's a call to, it's a call to action or a message on something that you need to change. It's not something that you just, oh, I feel like this, what do we do with it? It's, you have to change. So we're going to talk to what are the what emotions are. They're actually what? They can actually be your best friend. Because either you're going to change your perception of the situation, or you need to change your actions. That means any negative emotion should really be a sign. Wait, I have, a negative, I have to identify I have a negative emotion. What is, why do I have this emotion? What do I need to change? We're going to go into 10 specific ones and go through them. So it's actually, this is actually chesed that Hashem gives you this emotion because now you know I got to do something about it. That means I got to take action right now. I can't procrastinate it because if I procrastinate it, then that's when it becomes worse, okay? So again, when we don't change the problem is when, when we don't, when we feel sad and we don't 
we don't feel it, we don't change something, then it's just negligence. It's just negligence. Then that's when things become suppressed, that's when you, you have a problem with your karma. Okay? A person should understand that all the emotions, every sign, that's why Hashem sends you. He sends you a sign. That means if a person spoke to somebody and unfortunately he spoke Lashon Hara, what is he going to feel after? He's going to feel a little guilty. That's the sign from Hashem. Hey, check the Lashon Hara. You, you're not, you, you said something wrong. You know, sometimes you speak to people, you feel a little off. It's, it's a heaven, it's a sign from Hashem that something needs to be tweaked. Something needs to be tweaked. If you're feeling sad, something needs to be quick, tweaked. It's not just to sit there and do nothing. That's why Albert Einstein saying, says, he says insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. That's called insanity. That's called insanity. That means these negative emotions are a call to action. They're a call that I need to do some kind of action. So let's talk about the ten of them. Okay? When I heard this class, I said, wow, this is very, it's amazing because the ball's in your court. You can fix the problem right away, change your state, or if you don't change the problem right away, then it's just negligence. Then it's just a matter of negligence, and if you can't help yourself, Hashem can't help you. If you can't help yourself, how could you ask Hashem to help you? If you don't have mercy on yourself, how can Hashem have mercy on you? Think about it. So let's talk about the ten, the ten emotions, okay? So, when a person's feeling uncomfortable, when a person's feeling uncomfortable, what is it a sign? Okay? It's a sign that he needs to change his state. Change his state. Change his, you're feeling uncomfortable, you're not, change your state, move around. If you're feeling uncomfortable, if, you're, if something's off, first thing you need to do is, feel, is change your state. Okay? That's it. Fear. Fear, what is fear? What is the emotion of fear? Okay, we're gonna talk about a couple things. Fear is a sign to prepare ourselves or to get prepared. That means you're not properly prepared. Okay? Rav Nachman speaks about fear as something completely different. He says if a person has fear in this world, it's because he hasn't elevated fear to its source. I've taken, for example, I used to get horrible attorney bills when I was going through a situation in my life. And what did I do? I started fearing the attorney and fearing the bills and fearing no end. So what happens? Every time I feared, that problem became much bigger. Instead of fearing Hashem, I misplaced my fear to something else. Do you understand? When you fear is really a sign, spiritually, that you misplace the fear. Instead of fearing God, you fear the IRS. You fear, God forbid, you're going to get sick. Then the sickness can actually come upon you. So fear, it's a sign of really that the fear is not mitigated to its source. So whenever you have fear, you need to do judgment. Rabbi Nachman says in Lesson 15, a person has fear, he has to say, Hashem, I realize I have no amuna. How can I fear something else? Nobody can touch me down here if it's not declared above. Nobody can take a dollar from you down here if it's not declared above. So what do we do with fear? First thing we have to do with fear is we have to judge ourselves. There's a concept called double jeopardy. You can't get tried twice. What does that mean? What does double jeopardy mean? Right? Once a guy judges himself down here, they can't judge him upstairs. It's an unbelievable thing. That means you can actually control your judgment down here. If a person is able to do meditation, he's able to do talk to God, and says, God, listen, I insulted that person. Hashem, I feared that I was going to run out of money. What can I do? All of a sudden, I'm honest. And what did I do? I did mishpat. I admitted to my problem. They can't get you upstairs for that problem. Whatever you're able to mitigate down here, whatever you're able to talk about here, teshuva, they can't get you on that upstairs. So fear is, is a misplaced, is a misplaced judgment, or giving power to something else instead of giving the fear to Hashem, which is which is which is all under the the Amuna umbrella. Because if you have no Amuna, what are you fearing? You understand? Amuna is really the foundation for all these emotions. But when you don't have the right Amuna, then you end up fearing the other thing. Okay? When a person feels hurt. It's a sign that you have an expe expectation that's not being met, or you have a sense of loss. That's really what happens when a person feels hurt. He had an expectation from somebody that wasn't met. He feels hurt. He expected more from the person. He expected the person to respect them. If you tell your wife, you say uh, uh, not, the, not the right word to her, she's going to feel hurt. Her, her expectation was better of you. 
So what do you got to do? Change your perception or change the way you communicate. Change your behavior. You understand? If a person feels hurt, it's a sign of that. That's a sign. That he had been his expectation. Somebody else went into his expectations. He expected something better from the person. That's what hurt means. So what do we do? We got we to gotta address it. We got to tell your husband, listen, I felt hurt. Now, if you don't address it right away, then you start looking at him. Then you start building emotional imbalance. Then you start building hate. And then next thing you know, God forbid you're in the hospital. What's the matter? God forbid you have a lump here. What was it from? You know, my husband pissed me off a long time ago and I never said anything about it. Well, why didn't you say anything about it? Suppressed emotion. That's a sign of hurt. So the key to do this, it's a sign. Somebody hurt you, talk about it. You hurt me, let's talk about it. Let's not do it again. Change, move, make, take action. Don't let it build. build. Don't let it cook inside. That's the key. Anger. Anger is a sign that a very important rule that, that, that you have in your life has been violated by somebody else, even you. Even when you did something you weren't supposed to do, you got angry at yourself. You understand? Anger is a sign that you violated something that even you didn't, didn't, didn't enjoy. You got angry because you, you said you're gonna wake up at 10 o'clock and you woke up at 12. You're gonna get angry. That's a sign of anger. Anger is also a sign of the ego. That's another, Ramachan speaks about anger. Uh, a person has constant anger, it's a sign of his ego, that he's not controlling his emotions. So what do we do with anger? What do we do? Clarify your jewels or adjust them. Change, change. To realize, okay, I got angry. Let's deal with it. Let it go. Somebody pissed you off, let it go. Don't hold it in, don't hold it in. Frustration. What is frustration? This is very common. I see a lot of people, you speak to them, oh, they're just frustrated. Where do you think this is coming from? It's a signal that you're doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. That's frustration 101. Is when you're doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. That's frustration. Do we have some places in our lives that we have, we're frustrated? Ask yourself why you're frustrated in that area. Because you're doing the same exact thing and you're expecting a different result. It's not going to happen. That's a sign of frustration. So how do you get out of this frustration? Change! Do something! Unless you do something immediately, then it doesn't change. Then you're going to be always frustrated. Then you're always going to be frustrated. Okay? Disappointment. Right? It's a sign that you need to realize that an expectation or an outcome that you wanted didn't get hit. Any kind of sadness. I know this happens all the time in business. I thought I would close with this customer. It didn't happen. You get sad. So what do you do? Okay, Hashem, forgive me. Let me turn my expectation to appreciation. You made 10 sales, you lost one customer. What happens? Oh, you can focus on the one customer you blew. But how about the 10 customers you sold? You're an ungrateful person. You made 10 sales, that means you made 90% of your sales, you blew one customer, and all you can focus on, wow, I blew the customer. So your expectation, any kind of sadness, is your expectation. You didn't make money that day. You didn't, so what do you tell yourself? Okay, I'll make money tomorrow. And the sadness. You turn your expectation into appreciation. Instead of focusing on what you don't have, focus on what you do have. That's a quick way to get out of that state. The minute you get out of that state, you realize you expected something, it didn't happen, so what do you do? Okay, I'll come tomorrow. So I didn't make it today, I'll make it tomorrow. <coughs> right away, you change your state, you change your actions, change your perception, you're not sad anymore. You're not sad anymore. But if you dwell on that thought, if you dwell on that, we had, we had this year, one, one of my business had a, had a tough, tough year. So what did I say? I always say this line to myself, either you win or you learn. So this year was a learning year for me. All the energy of the stupidity of the negative thoughts of the worry, out the window. You win or you learn. If you didn't win, you learned. So this year's a learning year. So all my expectation, all my sadness is out the window. You understand? If you're able to make that quick switch, you're happy. And then you can attract good things to you. Because Hashem's going to say, you're happy with, with this? Let me give you something to really be happy about. So it's really, all these things are really changing states quickly, quickly, quickly. Not dwelling on, on states. Moving, moving, moving. Guilt. What is guilt? Guilt is a sign that you violated your own standards. Unfortunately, I have to deal with a lot of people in, with Pigama Brit. What happens? They, they fall for the Brit, and next thing you know, they feel guilty. 
Yeah, you violated your own standard. You robbed somebody, you violated your own standard. Any kind of guilt is because you violated your own standard. You, you, didn't, you, you ate the wrong foods you weren't supposed to eat, it's going to give you the guilt. So guilt is what? You violated your own standard. So how do you get out of guilt out of this mode? Change. Stop violating your own standards. And then you can get out of that state. You understand? If we're able to really go into the emotions and really go into each one, okay, I recognize I'm guilty. I recognize what I did. Okay, Hashem, I won't do it again. Let's move on. You get out of the guilt immediately. That's the key. That's the key to be met. You're going to feel these emotions. You're going to make mistakes. But the key is to get out. Quickly, quickly. Get out of the state. Okay? If a person feels inadequacy, I'm not enough, it's a sign that he needs to do something to get better. Get up and do something. Change up. Change your routine. Go for a run. Do something. Build your self-confidence. Okay? Depressed. Depressed is a sign that you have so much stuff on you that you don't know where to start. How do you get out of depression? You get moving. Do one thing right away. If it's your body, okay, you have money problems, you have wife problems, you have this problem. It's usually depressed people, they have seven different problems. Do one right now, attack that problem right away, and the other ones will follow. The other ones will follow. But usually what happens with depressed people, they like company. They call other friends. You know how depressed I am? Oh, you should see how I'm depressed I am. And they start bringing depressed friends, and then they have a whole chevra of all the depressed friends. You're angry? You should see how angry I was at my husband. Your husband did this to you? you? Look what my husband did to me. He brought his mother-in-law into town for a whole week. Oh, you really have it bad. So the emotions are not to sit there and bring company into the mess. It's the emotions really to get out. Get out quickly from the state. Okay? Loneliness is the sign that you need to connect to people. So these are the ten emotions. The key to this is don't, once you these emotions, they dwell a long time. That's where you have sicknesses. That's where you have problems. But if you're able to master these states, and to understand that I need to do something right now. Because it doesn't get better unless I get better. Then you have results, then you have a change of state, then you have happiness. So, a person should review, listen to this tape 10 times. It's very simple. The ball's in your court. Mental health is in your court. Because if you change your state out of a disappointment in 10 minutes, instead of wasting two days, two weeks, three weeks, because you're disappointed about a deal, look what you have. You just created two more weeks of your life. And that's the key. That's the key. So. Once we are able to master these emotions, you can uh, you can change your life. You change your mind, you change your life. All right. That's the